Welcome to Midday Meditation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to read to you today from the book of Philippians. I'm going to start with an introduction. What joy and glory came out of Paul's prison cell? Most of us would be thinking of ourselves and how we could get out. But Paul wanted to send to the Philippian church the revelation of joy. The church of Philippi began because of a supernatural vision experienced by Paul while he was ministering at Troas. He had a vision in the night of a man from Macedonia who stood at his bedside pleading with him to come and give them the gospel. It was in Philippi that Paul was arrested for preaching the gospel. Thrown in a prison cell and beaten, he and his co-worker Silas began to sing songs of joy and praise to the Most High God. This caused a tremendous miracle as the prison doors were flung open and they escaped, but not before leading their jailer to Christ. Perhaps the jailer was the very man Paul had seen in his vision. Paul met Lydia, a businesswoman who apparently led an import-export business from the city. The miracles of God birthed a church among the Philippians and Paul longs to encourage them to never give up and to keep rejoicing in all things. Paul's words point us to heaven. He he teaches us that our true life is not only in this world but it is in the heavenly calling, the heavenly realm and in our heavenly life that was given to us through Christ, the heavenly man. He left heaven to redeem us and reveal the heart of God the heart of a servant. He gave us new birth that we would be heavenly lights in this dark world as a witness of Christ's power to change our lives. There is a good and glorious work that Christ has begun and our hearts and promises to compete once he is fully unveiled. Philippians teaches us how important it is to be joyful throughout our journey and becoming like Christ. The words joy and rejoicing occur 18 times in this book, so read this heavenly letter of joy and be encouraged. Philippians 1 From Paul and Timothy, both of us servants of Jesus, the Anointed One, to all his devoted followers in Philippi, including your pastors, and to all the servant leaders of the church, may the blessings of divine grace and supernatural peace that flow from our God and our wonderful Father and our Messiah, the Lord Jesus, be upon your lives. My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches to it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is no wonder I pray with such confidence, since you have a permanent place in my heart. You have remained partners with me in the wonderful grace of God, even though I am here in the chains for standing up for the truth of the gospel. Only God knows how much I dearly love you with tender affection of Jesus, the Anointed One, I continue to pray for your love to grow and increase beyond measure, bringing you into the rich revelation of spiritual insight in all things. This will enable you to choose the most excellent way of all, becoming pure and without offence until the unveiling of Christ, and you will be filled completely with the fruits of righteousness that are found in Jesus, the Anointed One, bringing great praise and glory to God. I want you to know, dear ones, What has happened to me has not hindered but helped my ministry of preaching the gospel, causing it to expand and to spread to many people. For now, the elite Roman guards and government officials overseeing my imprisonment have plainly recognised that I am here because of my love for the Anointed One. And what I am going through has actually caused many believers to become more courageous in the Lord and to be bold and passionate to preach the word of God, all because of my chains. It's true that there are some who preach Christ out of competition and controversy, for they are jealous over the way God has used me. 
Many others have purer motives. They preach with grace and love, filling their hearts because they know I've been destined for the purpose of defending the revelation of God. Those who preach Christ with ambition and competition are insincere and they just want to add to the hardship of my imprisonment. Yet in spite of all this, I am overjoyed, for what does it matter as long as Christ is being preached? If they preached him with mixed motives or with genuine love, the message of Christ is still being preached. And I will continue to rejoice because I know that the lavish supply of the Spirit of Jesus, the Anointed One, and your intercession for me will bring about my deliverance. So no matter what, I will continue to hope and passionately cling to Christ so that he will be openly revealed through me before everyone's eyes. So I will not be ashamed in my life or in my death. Christ will be magnified in me. My true life is the anointed one and dying means gaining more of him. So here's my dilemma. Each day I live means bearing more fruit in my ministry, yet I fervently long to be liberated from this body and joined fully to Christ. That would suit me fine. But the greatest advantage to you would be that I remain alive, so you can see why I'm torn between the two. I don't know which I prefer. Yet deep in my heart I'm confident that I will be spared so I can add to your joy and further strengthen and mature your faith. When I am freed to come to you, my deliverance will give you a reason to boast even more in Jesus Christ. Whatever happens, keep living your lives based on the reality of the gospel of Christ, which reveals him to others. Then when I come to see you or hear good reports of you, I'll know that you stand united in one spirit and one passion, celebrating together as conquerors in the faith of the gospel. And then you will never be shaken or intimidated by the opposition that rises up against us. For your courage will only prove as a sure sign from God of their coming destruction and that you have found a new life. For God has graciously given you the privilege not only to believe in Christ, but also to suffer for him. For you have been called to him to endure the conflict in the same way I have endured it. For you know I'm not giving up. As you listen to those words, maybe you can read through Philippians 1 for yourself and just meditate on that today. What wonderful words that we have in this beautiful book called the Bible, that God wants to speak to us personally through his word. May you be lavished with his love today and be blessed in all you do.